uh, let me finish this one uh, with the last page. We talk about budgetary criteria, which is like the money. So people will say, okay, I don't eat this food. I don't eat this food because uh, I don't have enough money. All right. So I will spend a little bit of uh, time on uh, this section, uh, budgetary criteria. So on, on that page, uh, on that page, we talk about the problem of food uh, and security as well, and uh, but we sit on another chapter. So uh, you see the graph here, uh, very important for everybody actually uh, to know. All right. So we say, for example, the reason if I ask you, uh, why do you eat this food? Oh, I eat this food because it's cheap. All right. So we give you, we give you a reason that is associated with money. All right. But the problem with that is, you know, when we talk about money, we talk about socioeconomic status. So the socioeconomic status here, we talk about income. Income is what? Income is money. All right? And your money also goes with what? With your occupation. Occupation is what? Is your job, right? And then also your level of education. So we say, okay, people who went to like universities, most of the time they have better jobs, so they can actually buy, uh, you know, afford to get some uh, some decent food. So you have it here. We want to know here. We want to know. We want to know here. We want to know the relationship. Right? We want to know the relationship between what? Social economical status. Social economical status and what? And head. Social economical status is your you know, is who you are in the society, right? Are you a student? Are you a professor? Are you working at the railway? Uh, what kind of work are you actually doing? And you, the job that you do will decide how much money you have, right? So we usually ask the question when we talk, for example, about the problem of obesity, right? Uh, who's likely to be obese, rich people or poor people? In Korea, for example, obesity, you see obesity more with poor people or rich people? You say rich people. How about in the U.S.? What do you think? Obesity in the U.S. is what? Poor or rich people? Rich people? Poor people? Both? Yeah. So, but we will try to understand this, right? This is why we talk about poor choice, all right? So here, the social economical status is going to be associated with what? Food security, or if you want, food and security. Or the opposite, right? The opposite is what? Is food and security. Everybody knows the definition now, right? What is food security? I gave that definition the first day, all right? So you have enough food, right, uh, every day. The food must be what? The food must be sick. The food must be enough. And the food must be nutritious. All right? So now, food security and food insecurity, they will affect what? They will affect your health. So in this case, in this case, when we talk about health, we can talk about different things. We can talk, we can talk about obesity, all right? We can talk about cardiovascular disease. We can talk about cancer, uh, you know, anything that you want to put here. Okay, guys. So now, this is 
this is the question. This is the question that I asked first. If if you look at it, if you look at it, we want to know, for example, um, we talk about the we talk about the problem of obesity, for example. All right. So socioeconomical status. We talk about we talk about income. So people who have a lot of money. Who do you think is likely to be obese? Would it be like, we say like, uh, rich or poor people? The context, the context is different. The context is different. It really depends on where you live in the world. All right? It really depends on where you live in the world. Uh, for example, if you take, if you take, if you take the case, if you cannot see, Rich people, good job. <laughs> All right. So, if you take, for example, in the U.S., an example, U.S., Canada, in the Western world, what is happening here is people who are poor, all right, oftentimes they they are able to eat, but they don't necessarily eat the best food available. They are going to eat what? nutrient dense food, all right, they're going to eat food that has too much energy. And we'll be talking about this energy. And people who are poor, when we look at it, we look at their food habits, another element that I need to put here, we, we look at their food habits, and then we ask for example, we ask for example, uh, do you have a breakfast? Or oh, when you have a bed, breakfast, oh, I had a burger. Lunch, I also had a burger. Basically, they will be eating uh, food that are rich uh, in energy. So, what is happening here is, if, for example, people who eat food that we have rich in energy, remember that when we talk about energy here, we talk about calories, right? So, these people, we likely develop faster than the other part of the population, right? They will be developing some type of disease faster. Alright. So we look at it, socioeconomical status, if you are rich or poor, it will decide, it will decide over the status of your health. So over time, what is happening here is rich people are healthier. Alright? They have money. They can have uh, medical treatment. You know, rich people, you know, they have an insurance, so they can actually get treatment anytime that they want. Okay? So if they have a problem, they can treat it, you know, faster. But when somebody is poor, because of the social economical status, it will be very difficult, all right, for them to actually get those type of treatment. So the food, food, food security or food insecurity Let's talk about food and security. These people who don't have enough nutritious and safe food, their food habit is also going to be different. All right? So if they have, if they have bad food habits, if they have bad food habits, yeah, likely their health won't be the best. So there is a relationship between Social economical status, right? And the health. On your paper, uh, you will see on the booklet that I gave you, um, this is an article that I wrote about the problem of dental carry among uh, Korean children here. Uh, so, what you can see here is that poor children in Korea seem to have more dental uh, problems as well, okay? It will be based on what? Food choice, the, the kind of food they actually eat uh, every day. So, food insecurity, food insecurity will lead to poor food habits. And poor food habits will lead to what? Will lead to health problems, okay? So, which means that 
people who are poor, you know, the first line that goes up, 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 up here, are likely to also be not so well. Okay? So uh, I hope you guys get it, everybody needs to understand that this one. Uh, the relationship between social economical status and health. All right. So food and security we really need to bad food habits because you don't have enough food to eat, you don't have safe food to eat, you don't have nutritious food. And if you don't have, remember we study about the six principles of diet planning. If you remember, we're talking about food habit here. Food habit here, we need to have, we need to have here in the food habit, still in the same chapter, just look back at your notes. Here, we have what? You need to apply the six principles of that planning. You have that on your note, right? And I told you guys, everybody needs to know these six principles of that planning. And then you wonder if the poor people may apply it. So we talk about adequacy. What is next? Balance. All right. Next. Say that again. I don't hear you guys. Yeah, nutrient, uh, this is the part that is actually very important, right? Anybody remember why is nutrient density? The nutrient density, this is the part that affects poor people the most. Because the food that they eat, what, when we talk about nutrient density is what? We want a lot of nutrient but few calories. Remember that we don't want too much energy in the body. But if you eat cheeseburger every single day, okay, you're actually going to accumulate a lot of energy. Okay? So that may not be the best for them. So, uh, nutrient density, and then what, what is next? Kilocalorie control. Kilocalorie control. Kilo -calorie control means what? Remember? Energy in, energy out. This is where we study what? Energy expenditure. This is what I talked to you about, what? Metabolic equivalent. Because you need to have your energy going out, all right, as you have energy coming in. So if we become overweight, it's because we have too much energy coming in and not a lot of energy going out. So the person has to ask the question, 
Then, then you understand why? Right? Who's likely to be on this? Poor or rich people? Because if the poor people here are not able to control these calories, all right, because they don't, they can't control it because they focus on eating nutrient-dense food. What is happening? Energy in is going to be a lot. So then we need to find a program to help them remove the excess of energy. Okay, guys? How do you do? Okay, you say, you ask the person, okay, what do you do? Okay, uh, the person doesn't exercise, you know, just sleeping. So the MET value is going to be 0.9, they're not going to lose much energy. All right? But if the person starts working out, this is the best way, this is the best way we can control this energy. You cannot tell people, oh, stop eating. All right? But we find a way for them to eat the best quality food and also control the energy. Guys, remember, I told you guys you need to know this one. And, and uh, after kilocalorie control, what, what we have? Moderation. moderation. What is the problem with moderation? So we want to reduce what? Excess of fat, excess of salt, excess of sugar, added sugar. These are the food we must eat what? In moderation. Sorry, my phone is popular. We have to stop class now. I still have 10 minutes, right? So, and the last one, and the last one was what? Variety. Variety means what? Today we eat strawberry, tomorrow you're going to eat carrot, and then we eat something else, right? Variety means what? If I ask you, what did you eat? Today, what did you eat yesterday? I'm sure a lot of people ate rice yesterday, rice today, and rice again tomorrow. Okay? But what we have to do for each food group, we need to change every day. Why? Because every food group has different nutrients. And if you want to be healthy, we need different nutrients. And what is the role of nutrients? Nutrients are helping our body to function. If we don't have these nutrients, uh, no, we might need to be sick. Okay? And we'll see some of the deficiencies uh, that we have. So guys, understand this one. Social economical status, alright? If a person is poor, it may lead to food insecurity. Food insecurity is associated with your food habits. All right, and this food habits, we know that you don't have food, good food habits based on the six principles of diet planning. So, because I like talking about uh, how I do my exams, you know, the first question of the exams are always easy, true or false, multiple choice questions, like on the study that. But the last question is always a problem, right? So, the, so, so, so you have somebody, you have a case of somebody, for example, I give you a problem and you need to calculate the body mass index. You guys remember body mass index? So body mass index, if it's over 30, what does it mean? Obese. So now we have a case of obesity here. And if you have a case of obesity and the doctor says, okay, you need to apply the six principles of diet planning. What are the six principles of diet planning? Adequacy, balance, kilocalorie control. So you need to listen. And then, since the person needs to lose weight, because obesity is associated with non-communicable diseases such as cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, and diabetes. So what can we do? We need to create a program that will help the person lose weight. Remember that for this class, we focus on food and health. So how do you keep the person in health? You say, oh, okay. Hey, we need to lose some energy, right? How do we lose weight? We talk about energy expenditure, all right? How do we know how much energy the person needs to lose? 
then we choose the type of physical activity. So then you look at your table that I gave you, and then the specialist say, oh, you need to do some working at, at this speed. So then you look at the MET value, and say, okay, MET is five. Oh, this person will be able to lose this amount of energy. So again, guys, don't just memorize stuff. Try to try to understand and find logic in what we are studying here. All right? Everything else that we look at, you know, culture, religion, eh, it's all sweet. Let us focus again, right, on the food that we eat and on the solution, problem and solution. All right? So, uh, so this is what I have for you guys. Uh, next week we start the chapter two on nutrition assessment. Uh, now, in the meantime, uh, in the meantime, you have the study guide. Uh, you have the study guide here on the on the southern book. On the southern book, you have the study guide for this page uh, for this chapter. As you can see, not everything is on the study guide, right? And you guys have to write a lot of stuff. So uh, do the study guide at home, all right? And uh, the next class, next week, uh, next week is Tuesday, right? So the first minute of the class, we'll correct the study guide, all right? And uh, if we have time, uh, if we have time, what we'll do is start a new chapter, all right? If not, there will be interesting. So I'll do a review of this chapter on Monday, all right, uh, on Tuesday, and hopefully after that, you guys will be ready to go. All right. Okay, guys, uh, go have your lunch. I will be here if you have some questions. If not, have a good weekend. And remember that soju is not good. Okay? <laughs>